Now, most people use Firebase when it comes to their backend storage for their apps. But did you know that there is another viable alternative that you can use for storage for your apps that's getting more and more powerful and feature rich with each passing day? And that alternative is called Superbase. And so in today's video, we're going to look at some of the more interesting and powerful features that Superbase offers that you simply do not get with Firebase. Now, before we get started, as always, all the apps and resources that I demonstrate and or build in today's video are going to be available to view and or clone from my Patreon page. And you can learn more about our amazing Patreon community using the link in the description below the video. Now, before I show you some of the more interesting and powerful features from Superbase, we need to log in and create our project. So here is Superbase, and I already created my free account. They do have a generous free plan. So once you create your free account, you can simply log in and you're going to be a page that looks something like this. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a new project. So we're going to click here and we are going to create our new project right here. So I'm just going to call it project one. Here we're going to generate a password. We are going to choose this region and we're going to select this as our pricing plan. Next, we're going to click on create new project. And now, as you can see, our project has been created. So there's some information about our project. So it's telling you, welcome to your new project. You can get started by building out your database. And there's some links to some important features, such as a table editor, SQL editor, and the about database. And we're going to get to all that in just a minute. But the first important thing that I want to show you guys is that did you know that you can use Superbase as your authentication provider in your Flutterflow app? So here I am inside of Flutterflow. I just have a blank app with just two pages. I have a login screen and I have just a blank page that the users are going to see once they log in. So if you want to make Superbase as your authentication provider uh, for your Flutterflow apps, it's very, very easy to do because it's now supported natively. So all you need to do is come in here. You can go settings and integrations. You're going to go into authentication and you're going to enable authentication. Here you're going to pick Superbase. Once you pick that, it's telling you that Superbase has not been set up yet. And for that, you're going to scroll down. You're going to go into Superbase. And here you're going to enable Superbase. And now you need to fill out these two fields. So we're going to go back to our projects. We are going to go into project settings. You're going to go into API and you're going to copy this URL first, paste it in here. And then you need this something called an anon key. So you're going to come in here and you're going to copy this, paste it here. And then you can click on get schema. Once you do that, if you do not get any error messages, you're pretty much set up. And so now that Superbase is our default authentication provider, anytime you have anything to do with authentication, it's going to automatically use Superbase instead of the, the default option, which is Firebase authentication. And so, for example, if you click on this button and you take a look at the properties panel, you can see that it's automatically using Superbase. And below, you're even seeing some suggestions when it comes to using Superbase as the authentication provider. So it's telling you that know that this action does not create a user row in a Superbase table for you, but you cannot add an action to create one after the Superbase account has been created. OK, the next thing that you want to pay attention to is that due to Superbase behavior, we also recommend turning off email verification requirements on the Superbase side and instead handling the logic within the app. So what happens here is that when the user creates creates a new account, Superbase does not automatically provision that new account until the user verifies their email address. OK, and so Flutterflow is recommending that we turn that off. And so if you go back to Superbase, you just need to select this authentication part here. And here you can configure how authentication works. So what we want to do is we want to go into providers. We have email enabled. Now, if we toggle this option here to view the rest of the settings, we want to disable this confirm emails. And once we disable this, it's going to play a lot nicer with Flutterflow because once we disable this, 
the account is going to be automatically provisioned and the user can log in using that account which is the flow that flutterflow expects okay so now we can actually test out the app and try to create a new account so all we need to do is create this uh, test environment here wait until the app loads all right so here's our app and we are greeted with the login or create an account screen because we have not logged into the app yet and so we are here on the create account page and we can simply create a new account and that account is going to be created inside of superbase and then it's going to automatically log in into that account into our app so let's go ahead and create a dummy account right now so let's say james james james.com get started and here we are automatically logged into dashboard and now if you come back into superbase you will see that we have this new user account created here and you also have it created as part of the database so if you go into table editor you pick the schema as auth and you pick the users table you will see that there's a new row created for that new user account where the actual users are stored the next very cool feature i want to show you is what happens when the data is changed or updated in some way shape or form now the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new table and put some data in there so i'm going to click on this table editor i'm going to click on create a new table we're going to call this customers and we're going to create some columns here okay so let's say we're going to have uh, several columns let's say this is first name this is last name this is city and this is state okay and these are all going to be strings okay i'm just going to make them text okay we're going to click on save and we've created a new table with a bunch of columns that are going to store customer information okay so now we need some data here okay so we're going to click on insert import data from csv we're going to paste text and i actually went ahead and generated 20 random customer information and this is the preview of the data that's going to be imported so we're going to click on import data and it's adding those 20 rows so now we have a table with 20 random customer records consisting of four columns first name last name city and text and so now that we have this data inside of superbase we can display it inside of our app so we can go back to our app we can simply create a list view here we need to tell flutterflow that we've created a new table in superbase we can just simply come in here go back into superbase get the schema here and now we have this new table appearing here and now we can go back here add a backend query select superbase query select the table customer and we have the familiar filters as well as ordering we're going to click here confirm and inside of this table let's say we're going to have a row with a bunch of text fields let's say we're going to display some text information we're going to space out the fields and here let's say we're going to display first name and then the city and state okay city and then come in here stay next we're going to go into superbase and create an access policy so that we have access to our data you can simply come in here it says here no active rls policies you can simply click on that new policy get started and here you can pick a policy so let's say we would just want to enable read access to everyone we're just going to say use this template we're going to say review save policy so now that we have this policy here we can access the data in our flutterflow app so we're going to come in here do an instant reload and now we have the information displaying in our flutterflow app now what superbase allows you to do is it allows you to get notified when any data changes so we're talking about when data is created when data is updated or when data is deleted and this is by default this is very very easy to do and i'll show you how to do this right now and so let's say you have a list of different customers let's say you want to click on a customer and you're going to be redirected to a detail page and let's say you're going to be modifying some information about this customer well superbase can let you know when something like this happens automatically so i'm going to create a detail page really really quick we're going to start from an, a blank page i'm just going to call it detail we're going to go into detail and we're going to have a parameter okay so we're going to pass a parameter here this is going to be customer id we're going to select super base row here 
customers okay next we're gonna go in back to our page and we're gonna have navigation so if they click on it we're gonna navigate them to, to the detail page and we're gonna pass the customer id as a super base row right so we're just gonna pass this as the row here and now we know which customer that you know the user clicked in and which customer we are dealing with okay and here on this page we can just have let's say we want to display their city so we're gonna have a text input here text field and we're gonna have a button as well and so we're gonna select this text field here we're gonna load the user record that we need we're gonna do a super base query customers we're gonna do a single row and we're gonna have a filter here right so the id is going to be equal to the row that we passed customer id okay we're gonna click on confirm and now we have access to the record that was passed to us and inside this label here we can actually display the initial value as the city let's say right so we're gonna come in here we have the customer row we're gonna display the city the default city and this button is gonna update the city so this is gonna be called update we're gonna click here we're gonna add an action and we are going to be doing database so you can just type database a super base update row and we're going to select customers and we need to pick our matching rows right so we have the we need to set the filter here to match the rows we're going to select the key here we're going to say equal to and we're going to select the key that we passed initially okay right here and now we can actually set the fields and we only want to set the city okay so we're going to say city is set to the input that we are getting right widget state text field is going to modify this text field here input city and now when the user clicks on update it's going to update that row but it's only going to update the city okay that's the only thing that the user is editing okay I'm going to create a new policy full customization select all give it a name and simply return true here review save policy okay now the policy is saved and now we can update our data now we can go back to the app and let's say the user is not living in chicago he is living in another city here click on update and now if you reload the app we can see that john is now living in another city so we can click here and we can modify it but the cool thing about it is that anytime you modify or alter the data in some way shape or form it can let you know using a webhook so so we're gonna go back to superbase go to database click on webhooks and first you need to enable webhooks here and so now you can create a webhook for any table and specify when you want to be notified so i'm just going to say webhook one table is we're going to go to our table table public customers here and here you can get notified when a new data is created updated or deleted or any combination of all the operations which is really really cool so we're going to select an update and here you can specify the type of webhook we're going to choose http request method post and here you need to specify the url uh to where you want the request to be sent now you obviously have a lot of options when it comes to entering the url it really depends on the kind of app that you're building but for the purpose of this video tutorial i'm going to be using n8n which is an amazing tool it's absolutely free you can host it yourself and if you're not familiar with this tool definitely watch this video you're seeing here you're going to learn all about this tool and you're going to learn how to set it up for absolutely free so once you have this tool set up you can easily create a new workflow that's going to respond to your webhooks from superbase so here i am creating a new workflow we're going to come here and what you need to do is you need to set up this step here on the webhook call we're going to select this right here and right here you're given a url immediately that you can send your request to but first we need to configure this webhook we're going to select post for the path i'm just going to make it i'm just going to say super base so that we know what this webhook is about and here you have a couple of other options that you can configure but the most important thing is that you want to pay attention to test url and production url you're going to click on production url and you're going to click on this get the webhook url come back here and paste it in here okay so now go back to your webhook 
get out and you can make it active now okay so now this webhook is active which means it's actively listening for requests and so now once we click on create webhook anytime you make changes in any of the data in that customer's table you're gonna have a request sent to our newly created webhook and we can monitor this in real time so if you click on executions we're going to be monitoring all the requests that are coming in so for instance now let's go back to our app and let's say we reload the app here and let's say we want to modify some information having to do with sarah so we're going to click on sarah here and let's say she's no longer living in los angeles she's now living in san diego we're going to click on update this updated we're gonna go back to our webhooks here and guess what we have an execution and so what happened was we updated the data in superbase so that data is modified but we also got a notification uh with our webhook so you can just double click here and you can see that we are getting all this data so there's an update customers this is the record and we're getting new data this is this new data and we're when we have this old data so remember the old data was los angeles as the city the new data is san diego and then you can do a lot of interesting things you can go back to your editor and so here you can create another action that you want to happen anytime your data is modified so i can come in here and i can create you know i can have an if condition i can do data manipulation i can make a you know http request somewhere i can really do a lot of interesting things but the key here to understand is that we're getting this webhook notification automatically and it's built into superbase so that opens up a lot of possibilities a lot of things that you can do for instance you know if you have a customer you know the customer changed some information or something like that you can send an email right so i can just search for email i have an email trigger i can just send an email i can click this and then based on the information that i'm getting in the previous node on that webhook node with the data that was changed by the customer or by someone else i can send an email uh somewhere letting them know that the data was changed but that is just one example of the things that you can do remember you have full control of when you want to be notified based on what kind of data is changing so this is a very very powerful feature and that opens up a world of possibilities that you can do with Superbase and a tool like N8N. The next killer feature that I want to show you in Superbase is the fact that you have native API access when it comes to pretty much any operation having to do with your data so for instance let's say i pick that customer table here i have the customer i have all the data now i can obviously modify all of this data right here inside of superbase's dashboards now i can simply go to the table editor i can pick my table here and i can pick on any of these fields and i can modify it so let's say this is no longer michael this is john you know john john here i can just press enter and i modified this specific cell now this john john is at the bottom here but i can also work with this data using native api access so all you need to do is click on this api button here and based on how you're going to be accessing this data you can access it using javascript but in our case we're going to be accessing it using rest api so you, you can simply click on bash and for each operation you have an api example that allows you to do something with this data so you can select an id select created at select last name city etc etc but you can also insert a row you can do filtering you can do pagination you can delete matching rows you can do all kinds of amazing things using this native api and you simply can't do this easily with firebase so let me show you an example so let's say i want to read all rows i can simply click on copy now i'm going to go into my favorite api testing tool of choice it's called rapid api and it's completely free for mac and there are all kinds of tools that are available for pretty much any platform you can simply google if you do not have a mac and i can simply click on plus here create a new request and i can go into file import paste that sample right here and click on import okay and now i have the entire request 
generated for me the only thing i need to do is i need my super base key i can simply go back here i can click on this and i can pick this a non-public key because i have my settings set up and now i can copy the entire request along with my key filled in so i'm gonna click on copy and i can just simply go file import text paste this here and I have a new request with the key information filled in. So all I need to do is execute this right here. And now I have all the data here. So you can look at JSON text right here. And we have all the data. We have all the 20 customer records here in this output. Now, obviously, I can do a lot of interesting things. I can, I can do filtering. I can insert a row, some column, other columns. So for instance, I can copy this file import paste this here and now i can specify some of the information that i want to have inserted as a json request so let's say i want to insert um you know first name is going to be michael michael five so that i know i'm you know this is the information that i've just inserted last name is going to be you know roberts and i execute it and I get an immediate response that everything is fine. So if I go into row, I see that it's 201 created, which means that that new record has been successfully created. And now I can go back into Superbase and I should see that new record created right here. So this is this Michael 5, Roberts 5. And we obviously did not specify city or state. Now, most of the time, you're not going to be creating customers from an API testing tool, such as Rapid API. You're going to be doing that programmatically and so you can easily use a tool such as n8n or make.com to programmatically work with the data whether it is selecting all the records querying filtering creating new data or updating specific records all made possible by this native superbase api okay so i can simply click here i can just come in here and i can do an http request Next, I can click on import curl, paste my request here, import it. And once I import this data, everything is filled out for me automatically. So I can just come in here and let's say I want to create a new record. It's going to be first name is going to be Ken. Uh, another field last name is going to be Roberts 5 here. Next, I'm going to click on execute node and it's automatically going to send this API call to my Superbase instance. And in this case, create a new record. So we're going to execute this node right here and see the response we get. So we didn't get anything back, but it says here node executed successfully. So we can be pretty sure that a new record has been created. Go back to Superbase. And guess what? Here it says Ken 5, Roberts 5, no, no. So we can easily create, update, delete records using this amazing native API. Now, this feature is definitely the most powerful of them all, and I've saved the best for last. So if you check out their homepage, they have something called Vector, which is one of their offerings, okay? And so this allows you to integrate your favorite ML models to store, index, and search vector embeddings. Now, I actually did a video just recently about this. You're going to see this video here. And essentially, what a vector is, it's an array of integers and they allow you to store embeddings so what is an embedding so essentially an embedding allows you to represent a piece of text as an array of numbers now generally speaking that array of numbers doesn't really mean anything by itself but it becomes super useful and super helpful when it comes to comparing one embedding with another embeddings because when you convert text into numbers you can use all kinds of mathematical formulas to compare one set of numbers to another set of numbers and that way you can see if one piece of text is actually similar we're talking about semantically similar to another piece of text and this is very very powerful because it, it allows you to create search engines it, it allows you to create summaries it allows you to create chatbots q a systems you name it. this is all extremely powerful and the best part of it all is that superbase handles this natively
Now, in order to use this amazing functionality, the first thing that we need to do is we need to go into our database, click on extensions, and once you're here in extensions, you want to search for vector. Now, you want to click here to enable it, and you want to make sure that it's enabled in your public schema and that way you can use it in the tables that you have in your public schema you're going to enable this extension and now this vector extension is now enabled that way you can go back to your table editor we're going to create a brand new table we're going to call it snippets and we're going to create a couple of columns the first one is called a text which is where we're going to store the text snippet okay this is going to be text here. And in this next column, we are going to be storing the corresponding embeddings. So we're going to call this column embedding. We're going to come here. And now you should see this vector column type here that we didn't have before because we didn't have that extension enabled. So we're going to select this right here and we're going to click on save. I'm going to go ahead and create this brand new table for us. And now we can add some data to this table. You can click on the insert, insert row, and now we can add this data. So let's go ahead and add some snippets with the corresponding embeddings to this table. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to take some text snippets, convert them into embeddings, and then store all of that data in our newly created table so here i have a wikipedia article about elephants okay so there's some paragraphs here and so what we can do is we can use each paragraph as a separate snippet create embeddings and then store this data in our newly created table now for the embeddings we're going to be using open ai's embeddings it's the same company that you know introduced to us the world of gpt and chat gpt they also have an embeddings api and so what you can do is you can feed it some text and you're going to get back an array of numbers which is a vector that represents the embedding for that specific piece of text. Now, here I have configured this specific OpenAI Embeddings API inside of Rapid API. And so what we're gonna do now is go back and take this paragraph here into our API and get back embedding. So for this paragraph, I'm gonna execute this request and I get a list of embeddings, okay? Once we got this embeddings, what we are going to do is we're going to create a new row here. So I'm going to take this text, paste it in here. And for the embeddings, I have this embedding right here. And so what I can do is I can just copy all of this right here and paste it in here and then click on save. And that's going to create a new record. So I'm going to do this a couple of more times. That way we have several snippets and then we can query this data based on its similarity. I'm going to create a new row right here. Copy the second paragraph. Now get the embedding for it. Okay, copy this, paste it in here, and do the same thing for two more paragraphs. All right, so now we have four records with four text snippets, essentially the first four paragraphs of that Wikipedia page with the corresponding embedding. So now we can easily query this data for similarity by converting our queries into embeddings and then comparing the embeddings here now after you created your table with the data with the text snippets and the corresponding embeddings the next thing that you want to do is you want to create a simple flow so here i am logged into n8n a great great tool that allows you to do automations very very quickly and easily and here i designed a very simple workflow that essentially takes a query gets embeddings for it and then compares the embeddings with other embeddings that we have in the system to see which one is the closest and typically this is something you're going to be doing for things like q and a's and to figure out you know what's the right answer for a specific question now i'm going to make this entire flow available to our amazing patreon community so if you're a member you'll be able to simply get this entire workflow and import it inside of your n8 and tool instance so you can immediately start to play with it kind of test it out and see how it works but in a nutshell what's basically happening is here we have a webhook and we are getting a request and inside that request we have a text query so this is going to be a question you know what about this or you know help me figure this out and then what we're doing is we are 
translating this text query into its embedding. So here it's essentially an API call to OpenAI to get the corresponding embeddings for the text query. Once we have that embedding, we are making a query to our Superbase data store. So we are getting all the embeddings and all the text snippets. We are merging the results and then we are comparing them and seeing which one of those snippets is the closest. Now it's important to mention that here I'm using a custom API that I talked about in the previous video and you're going to see a link to it right there and so essentially this is a custom backend that I built and so here I have a function called get similar that I'm using in this flow and if you want to learn how I build this entire custom backend and how you can build your own custom APIs and everything like that it's a very very powerful method you definitely need to watch the video that you're seeing right there and so after we execute this API call to our custom backend we are going to get a response with the closest snippet that matches our query and this is essentially what this is this is the final module in this whole flow that simply responds with the text snippet that this module deemed to be the closest there and then I went ahead and I created a simple page in Flutterflow where a user can ask a question and they're going to get a response right here. And so if you go into our API settings here, we have an API call to N8N that executes this entire flow and we can actually test it out. So if we go into response and test, I can ask it a question, where do elements live? And, and if you remember, we have each of these paragraphs as a snippet so if you think about which one is the closest it's probably going to be this one right elephants are scattered throughout sub-saharan africa okay south asia and southeast asia so this should be the closest right so if we, if we go back to the app and if we execute this hopefully we should get that specific snippet okay and so there you have it elephants are scattered throughout sub-saharan africa south asia and Southeast Asia, okay, and are found different habitats. So we are getting the right snippet here. We can also ask it something else. So if we go back here, we can see that African bush elephants and Asian elephants are listed as endangered. So we can go back and we can ask it, are elephants considered endangered? Okay, let's see if it figures it out. Okay, and there you have it. African bush elephants and Asian elephants are listed as endangered. So it correctly figured out that it needs to show that snippet for this query. And, it, and that's exactly what our app does here. So we can say something like, where do elephants we're going to query it. It does the exact same thing and it simply displays the answer right here. And there you have it. And there's the answer. We can try, you know, the same query as before are elephants considered to be endangered okay let's go ahead and try this all right and there you have it african bush elephants and asian elephants are listed as endangered and african forest elephants are critically endangered okay so it correctly figured out to use this specific snippet in this case okay all right so there you have some of the more powerful features of superbase now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, if you are serious about no code, you definitely want to get access to the things that I talked about in this video. And so when you become a member of our amazing Patreon community, and it truly is an amazing Patreon community, there's a lot of interesting discussions, a lot of ideas, a lot of interesting tools that people have been talking about. You will get access to not only this app, but also to my N8 and workflow. And plus, as as you know you're also going to get access to pretty much all the other apps that i built on this channel so if you are serious about your no code development you definitely owe it to yourself to click the link in the description and join our amazing community